ain't going back. Now I'm going to buy into all that. Hey, hey, ain't going to hide. Going to let all the fears lie. Go, mother, they just saw my side. Got all of the love and going inside. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to The New Now and Autodidactic. Campbell and I are together once again to share some lovely topics on how we feel you can be happy, healthy, and free, and you know we'll uh, become strong in this life. And today's topic, Campbell chose, we're going to discuss speak your truth. Maybe how to do it, how to get there, what it is for you, and what that means. Campbell, nice to be talking with you again. Yes, thank you, Lorenzo. Thanks for having me. Um, from the new now, of course, and yeah, speak your truth. Um, this is a thing we're hearing a lot of in a lot of speaking going on, aren't we? Um, but I, I don't think a lot of people are really thinking about what that that means. You know, people just randomly speak things to the universe, don't they, without really thinking about what's going to come back to them. And um, I think, yeah, that's something that, that we need to sort of get onto because, as we know, it, you know, there's a collective. A collective energy that that gives us our collective reality and we're, we're all inputting that with with what we speak um you know so obviously the, the more negative things we speak the more negative the reality comes and obviously vice versa so yes speak your truth the truth i mean it's been a real interesting couple of weeks even a couple of years for me and i've watched my truth consistently and constantly change in in the finer points i'm always i've always been about freedom i've always been about happy healthy living but uh, what that means and what that, you know, even Campbell and I were talking about it a bit before we came on the air now is like, what constitutes a happy life? What constitutes a healthy life? What constitutes an abundant life? And I would feel your truth would revolve around that because those seem like the most important topics for just about anyone. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, you know, if you don't know who you are, yeah. then you, you don't know who, well, you, you can't know where where you're going because if you don't know who you are you can't know what makes you happy right you, you can't know what makes you truly happy so everything that that you're speaking out into the universe and acting out and all this kind of stuff which is bringing you your results um is going to be you know skewed so it's going to be bringing you results that you don't want so so i think you know a big part is yeah who are you where are you you know what do you stand for and what do you want to become um because without direction of course you know we're just speaking random thoughts and we're just getting random things back to us and and of course that makes us believe that the story is true right everything's just random you know nothing's connected no it's not your fault just blame everyone else point the finger that'll work um you know all this kind of stuff uh, but of course as we know you know it's the exact opposite is what what the truth is so it's just really important to to understand that what we put out will come back to us so be careful what you put out there. For sure. You know, I think it's a marvelous world in, in many ways. And I've seen it become more marvelous and more, I don't like to use the word magic because it has its, its strange connotations, but I would say more mystically beautiful, magically delicious, let's say, as, as this, uh, you know, viral nonsense has gone on for a few years because the truth of people is really coming out, right? Whether they've been, you know, Kemble and I talked about this too, the truth of businesses, whether they're really altruistic or whether they're about money. When you meet friends or family, you know, as Kemble and I both asked if we're getting our vaccines over the years or if, you know, we're going to do this, that or the other thing, or you're coming to a COVID hotel in Canada, you know, I've been asked, are you traveling there? And, and I'll say, well, are, are you crazy? You know, I don't want to be locked away for a few weeks just to go visit some friends in, uh, you know, in BC or whatever. And they'll go, well, uh, you know, nothing you can do about that or what's wrong with that? Or why don't you, you know, you know pony up uh, to the table and, you know, put out your arm and get the vaccine? And what I'm getting at with all of that is, is you're starting to see all around you people speaking their truth, even though sometimes, in my opinion, it's an ugly truth or an unhealthy truth or, a, or even a devilish truth, if you like. But, you know, that has given me the ability to see the life I made before uh, in relation to the business people I was working with, in relation to the friends I was spending time with, and in relation even to family members I had thought were close to me, so-called blood relatives, and uh, then to see... What's really going on, it's, I guess you, you know, they say you always know who your friends are when, when the chips are down, right? Or when the, when the challenges are, are up, you, you get to really see who people are. It's easy to be happy and friendly when everything's easy, right? When things are challenged, you, you see the challenged eyes of people and their actions. And for me, that's allowed me to hone my own truth a little further over this last couple of years, because it's definitely changed 
quite a bit. You know, the core is the same freedom. I'm always about that, but how to get there and what that means for me has really gone through a drastic enhancement, let's say, <laughs> over the last uh, 18, 19 months, you know, however you want to look at it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely unveiling, isn't it? I mean, everything's just becoming, you know, um, well, hyper in our face, but also hyper sensitive, isn't it? It's, you know, nothing can be hidden. I mean, look at, look at, you know, these, you know, politicians, they just look like fools. You know, they can't hide anything anymore. Um, all the information's out there. And of course, they're running around trying to pretend that it's not out there and that everything's, you know, to do with the magical mystery bug. Um, but they can't hide that. They're just looking stupid. People, no one trusts these people anymore. And so what's, I think what, what's happening, you know, with the unveiling is we're starting to see this world that, that we actually were living in and that we were complying with and that we were creating, you know, but we were, we were all in a bit of, you know, a, a bit of a stupor. We had this program over us so that we couldn't quite see it. But as that lifts, um, we are seeing it and, and that is making us, you know, putting us in a position where we now has to have to choose. Are we going to keep going along, you know, with what we used to do or are we going to do something different? And of course, mm -hmm. if we're going to do something different, what is that? What is that truth? What are we going to do? Are we just going to run around and yell and protest just because other people are doing it? Or are we going to sit down, figure out who we are, where we want to go? And, you know, figure out a plan, you know, a, a bit of a, um, you know, trek of how to get there and, and just start walking because that's that that's speaking your truth. That's living your truth and being your truth, um, you know, because we have three bodies, right? So the truth is, you know, obviously part of the, the one, the eternal, the spirit body. Then what we think goes out there. So if we're thinking in truth and who we are, we're, we're putting who we are into the into the ether and we're becoming more of that, you know. We're putting our signature in there. Um, and then obviously with the actions we do with our body, that that puts it out into the physical world. And it, it's it's us. It's people like this that need to be doing this and that need to be putting more energy out there because we're, we're, you know, we're putting out good energy, positive, because we, we see what's happened, right? Everyone's just running around random, randomly pointing fingers and yelling. Um, and that's all going into the ether. So we need to um, combat that and be better and just hold the vibration and not, you know, not be pulled down in, into the, you know, the Wetika, right? The lower um, vibrations, because that's a trap. We've just got to stay above it. You know, you don't need to watch the news. It, you, if, <laughs> you don't need to do anything these days. Believe me, you will find out what's going on. It, it, it's impossible not to. But then if you're going to spend your time going down all these rabbit holes and oh my God, it's so bad. It's so bad. And look what they're saying. You, you, you're falling for their plan. Um, they're, they're leading you down a road. So we need to, yeah, rise above that. And it all, all starts with who are you and what do you want and where do you want to go? What do you want to create? What do you stand for? All that kind of stuff. Take, take a stock of what you want with your life, what you've always wanted. I, I've had the opportunity. I can only talk about myself and what I've done. Going back to when I was a little boy, looking at what I felt about life, what I felt about religion, family, friends, money, you know, everything, what I really, really wanted to create and to see what I let go of or lost along the way for whatever reasons you do when you become an adult. You know, we all drop maybe some of the uh, inspirations we had as a child growing up. They say, well, you can't do that now that you're this age or you shouldn't do that or you have to be responsible to do this or you have to go to school to do that. And probably if you're like me, you looked at all the times you were suggested those uh, bad pathways, I'll call them for myself. And probably at the time, your initial guts were saying, yeah. You know, it's the best way to say, no, right? And then eventually you go, well, you know, I want a house and I want a home and I want a car and I want a wife or a girlfriend or whatever. And, you know, you say, okay, I guess I got to, I got to, I got to, you know, fill in your own blanks. And was that your truth? And I would say, since, you know, we're talking about your truth, maybe unveiling your truth, I found for me, it wasn't. I was taking other people's truths, right? I was saying, well, I don't really like them, but okay. I don't like that either, but okay. And maybe these days, as I've seen in Campbell and I, again, we're talking before we came on, we saw it's just not working anymore. Right? You, you can't just go to the, uh, work and get a job and have some savings and feel all right, right? You can't just go to your bars anymore. You know, they've delayed the izakayas in Japan again. Every two weeks they go, we're going to open in two weeks. You know, they've been doing that for four months now. And I'm going, when are these people going to wake up? Like always the signs are changing. We're opening in two weeks. I'm going, I like how many times do they have to see the time scratched out and changed to the following two weeks before they realize, you know, they're being lied to all the time. 
You know, it's just a short, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a short frog boiled to death when, you know, they're, and so, you know, my truth is, you know, I don't really care about going out and drinking any, any longer, but uh, I'm seeing the lies that are being put to people and figuring out, you know, you can't be waiting for your truth to come from outside yourself. I guess we can talk about that. Speak your truth. It has to come from inside you. If it's an honest truth, I think, feel. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, that's, that's the whole game is, is them, you know, the powers that want to be, um, they're not creative. So they need to, to take our creative force and, and they do that by making us think what, what they want. Um, and so this, you know, this is self-education, right? Well, we need to be self-educated. We need to, you know, um, do our own research and get, you know, many different points of view so that we can get a perspective that means something. You know, if you've only got one point of view, you're being told something being led down the road and and you know if you're doing the same as everyone else as a majority same thing guys you're being led down the road um you know because we know you know they don't care if you're part of you know the the masses they don't care they'll let you do that all day long it's only when you want to do something different and you think for yourself that's when you're a problem to the system and and of course you know you can't be that problem unless you know who you are and and this is what the change is it's it's all you know, the old system is dying and it has to, it has to crumble. And, and this is why people are confused. They want to keep it. They want to keep it because they don't know who they are. It's safe, right? Mm. It's like being at mummy and daddy's house. They don't have to make too many decisions. They don't really have to know who they are. They don't have to go inside. They don't have to do the hard work. Um, but they, they believe, you know, the lie that, well, if you just keep working, you know, you'll be fine. Things will get better. You'll retire. You'll have money. But they don't, like it's like you said, with the, the pubs that never open, they don't look around and say, oh, hang on, everyone my age is broken, unhappy, you know, but, but it's going to be different for me because the system will work for me, you know. So that that's all, that all comes from not knowing who you are, not, you know, um, standing your ground, not standing for something. It's, it's, and, you know, that's slave mentality. Look where it's got us. So we, we clearly need to, um, you know, do something completely different. And the main thing is, you know, understand that no one has, you know, this whole system thing. They don't get to make the rules. You know, they don't. That They actually have less validity than us because, you know, look what they're doing. They're trying to control the creation. So that really, you know, um, not avoids them <laughs> as any kind of, you know, leader as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, because the creation is imagination, right? It's, it's, that's why, uh, it's just everything. That's why, you know, we, we, we're so stuck that they've um, stolen all the information and, and just, we're not even taught to sit there and imagine and be creative anymore. That's just for those weird arty people, you know, but, but that's our, our biggest power as humans for all of us is our, you know, creativity. That's our link to all to source, um, and that's what they've got us, you know, cutting off and not believing in. So in yeah, state, we, uh, we just have to flip, flip the script. We really do. You know, I mean, you can imagine better. It's not that hard. You look around at, at the society these days. And you know, I used to have people say, I don't know why the politicians don't see that this way is better or that way is better or the economics would be more fair this way or if they did this, there would be more energy and less pollution. Or if they did that, people would have a little bit more money and they would be able to save some money or, or they build these kind of roads that would last 10 years instead of three years. I mean, there's a million ways I grew up noticing that things could be better. And then eventually I realized, you know, it's set up this way on purpose, right? This society is not built... And of course, the politicians, well, while they're stupid idiots, in my opinion, thinking like evil is dumb, and you know, I, I would say as as my my feeling, but you know, they're not so stupid as to not realize that you know they're, they're, that the things are being set up horribly on purpose, right? You're being set up to fail on purpose, you know. You're being set up to uh, be sick on purpose, to be enslaved on purpose, and you know, there's no reason to want to keep a system going just because you don't know that there's something better out there. You know, I guess that's where bravery comes in and that's where knowing your truth comes in. Because my truth has always been, I can yeah. feel there's something better, you know, a, you know, a, a monkey with, a, you know, a half a brain and, you know, one foot working could probably come up with a better idea than, you know, than what they've done with modern society in that, you know, you work six days a week and you save a little bit of money. If you're lucky, you get drunk on the weekends and, you know, you get your vacation. And, uh, you know, if you're lucky when you're 65, you retire to a, a golf village in Florida, I guess, if you're in North America or in Australia, I'm not sure, maybe to a warm uh a warm province in Australia or wherever people decide to retire when they 
you know, and, and uh, I used to go down to Florida, actually, Campbell, when I was younger. Uh, my grandparents owned a condominium, you know, the traditional old people in, in from Canada down to Florida. So I used to visit in the in the summers when I was, you know, a young teenager and nobody looked happy there. Those old people, you know, playing their 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 uh, shuffleboard or their cards or going out to eat or sitting on the beaches. It's like, they look miserable. You know, it's like it's like waiting to die and hanging out and complaining about the heat or complaining about their children or complaining about the, the, the their pension, which wasn't big enough or the sandwiches, which got more expensive the week before or whatever. Right. And and it showed me hmm. at the time that, you know, even the best of the outcome for that kind of a life, you know, you retire when you're 60, you go live in a warm place and you don't have to work. It looked like hell, I thought. Anyways, you know, you know, maybe a comfortable warm hell, but hell just the same. <laughs> It, it's madness. It's it's trading your life, you know, for for a retirement, right? Trading your sixty years when you're healthy and you're young and you're fit and you can do stuff for what you know twenty or twenty five years when you're old and and decrepit and on a fixed income and you can't change that. That's why they all get annoyed when things go up because you know they can't go out and you know or they at least don't believe that they can go out and start new businesses and make more money and change things. You know they're set in. And with, you know, their activities, again, it's not like they don't sit there and think, what do we want to do? You know, let's make a plan and just go off and do something. It's like, well, we can go to the restaurant or we can play Scrabble or we can do this. What are we going to, you know, they're just living in this box where they, they're literally being told this is, this is your life. Here are the choices you get one, two or three, which one do you want? Um, and this is all a result of, of trusting the system and, and mm. not thinking for themselves, believing oh, if we just do what we're told, then it'll all be good. But, you know, we know, we know this doesn't work. You know, it's, no one's happy when they, when they get to a point where they realise, you know, even if they are rich, when they realise they're not, they're no longer, you know, young and healthy and can go and, you know, travel the world and climb cliffs or whatever, um, they're not they're not happy when that realization comes. They realize I was scammed. I just traded the yeah. best years of my life for what? And and to prop up the system that that has put me in this in this situation. You know, so we would need to realize that it's it's the system, right? It's and I guess this is what we need to speak out against. And a lot of people are, you know, because if we start speaking into the ether, into the universe that that we are free, we are men and women, you know, we come under, you know, God's law or whatever you want to call it, law of the land. And, you know, in a positive sense, you know, it makes no, you know, it's not good to stand there and go freedom, give us freedom. I mean, hello, hello. <laughs> don't ask yeah. for, for permission, guys. Yeah. <laughs> There's no, no permission needed. We make the decision and this is what your truth is. You just make the decision and you just, it, it's happened. It's done. You just walk into it, live into it. You know, um, if you if you're asking for permission, it's not your truth, or at least you're not you're not you know um, strong enough to stand by your truth and defend it. And unless you're willing to defend your truth, it's not truth. It's just an idea that someone's given you that that sounds good to you at that that point in time. That's all it is. So, you know, tr truths need to be strong, yeah, yeah, based on something. Yeah, they do, and you don't need a reward for your truth. That's the other thing. You don't need someone to tell you it's okay or it's good, or you're going to even get paid for it. I mean, everyone needs their abundance and everyone needs their house and I can go on and on. Everyone wants to eat, et cetera, et cetera. You know, that, those are all givens. So I don't really need to talk about it, but if something is your truth, you don't have to say, this is my truth. Is that okay? <laughs> you know, or this is my truth. Do I get paid for that? Or uh, this is my truth. Do you love me? Because I have, you know, uh, you know, fill in your own, what you're waiting to hear back from. No, uh, you know, speaking your truth comes from inside and you don't give, you know, two, two farts in, in on a windy day. Uh, you know, that uh, that anybody cares or not cares because it's your truth. And, you know, I, I'm not saying you should go out and hurt anybody because I don't think that's an honest truth for anybody, but unless they're trying to do something to you, I guess. But, uh, you know, your truth is your truth and and it will. It will. You know, I can hear a lot of people in, in the ether now saying, well, what about this? What about that? And what about the mortgage? And what about, uh, you know, fill in your blanks about all the reasons I can't stand in my truth. But the world, when you stand in your truth, will give you more options. It, it, you know, uh, it's that simple. If you stand in your truth and you don't know what's coming next, something will show up or something will go away mm -hmm. or something will change or somebody new will show up, but, but always, or, or you'll have a challenge that you'll have to face, but that's okay. Cause when you face your own challenge, more truth will come after that, you know, and, and, and 
Yeah. I mean, I, I read a book I, I wanted to share with Kemal. Maybe now is a good time. There was a book I read a long time ago called Your Owner's Manual. Very interesting. There was a picture in it showing an iceberg that was like 10% above and 90% below. And they were saying, you know, what really goes on in your life when you're faced with people you don't like or situations you don't like? You're faced with this iceberg of yourself and that, you know, you only really see 10% of what's going on with you and maybe 90% is hidden. You know, bad things you've done or bad things you've let in or bad experiences you've had that people, everyone goes, no, I'm going to forget about that. I don't want to look there anymore. But often, you know, and, and, and you know, Campbell and I talked about, you know, some of the, the, the not nice situations you're faced with these days. These people will come back and, and I'm going to relate this to, to speaking your truth and we'll show you something not nice about yourself. You know, and, and I've seen that happen to me over and over over the last six months to a year. You know, someone will be a bitch or a bastard or, you know, again, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll go to get angry. But instead of getting angry, I'll go, whoa, why, why is this in my face? Right. Why, why is, you know, why did I ask for this? Basically, why did I ask for this truth? You know, why, why is this lady being mean to me or this guy being mean to me or this person giving me the finger or whatever? And then I'll find when I dig deep, <laughs> You know, I'll see how I, maybe when I was in my 20s, was also that way, you know, full of myself, an asshole, not so nice. I had a lot of jobs that were maybe not the best uh, spiritually motivated, uh, you know, work I could have taken at the time, let's say. And, you know, I think a lot of us hold inner disgust for our own previous actions, because if you're a loving being, probably if you've done something not loving, it will still be inside you, you know, mm. you you may bury it, but you may still have those feelings for the rest of your life of how you did something not so nice. And what I'm really getting at in all this is if you face these people and you don't get angry with them, as I did even recently, you get to see how you were not so nice and then you can forgive yourself and then the energy moves and then there's more space for new truths. Let's just say it's like emptying the garbage <laughs> that you've been carrying yeah. inside you your whole life. Yeah. yeah. So we're talking about yeah, speaking. Definitely, you know. Yeah. Sorry. You go. No, I was just saying, so I, I found this is another way maybe to get there if people aren't sure on how to speak their truth is maybe some of the first things you got to do is empty your inner garbage or your inner world or your inner energy, figure out how to clean that out. And then maybe more space will come for your truth to grow, right? You got to weed the garden, right? Before new flowers grow, let's say. So that could be another way to. Uh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You've got to create a, create a space, right? Um, dump, dump, the, dump the garbage. Um, and it's a. Uh, that whole thing, remember what they used to say back in the 80s, you know, garbage in, garbage out. And that was an old computer term from back in the day. Yeah. Um, you know, what you put in is what you get out. Um, but, um, yeah, this is, oh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Um, so, yeah, speaking your truth is, I think where I was, <laughs> what were you saying? Well, I was saying, basically, if you weed out the bad things you put inside your life. That's it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the world's a mirror, right? Um, we, we get reflected back at us what, what we put out and also what we need to learn. And, and we see at the moment everyone's um, getting offended, right? Mm. Oh, I'm so offended. How dare well, you offended. say that? But what that well, is... That, that's just a message, you know, from, from them inside saying you, you need to deal with something. And, and they're, you know, being offended is saying it's their ego. I don't want to deal with that. I'm not the problem. They're the problem. And, of course, if, if everyone else is a problem, you've got to go and change seven plus billion people, right? Uh, much easier to, to, to find a mirror and go, oh, there's the problem. It's, it's just me. Okay, only one person to fix. And I can actually affect that person. Um, you know, so it's a... You know, the whole concept of, of it's the world's problem is just ridiculous, but it's so disempowering. It just puts you in a place of no power, um, you know, because, yeah, people just don't know who they are. They're walking around following people. And, and, and unless we're focused, we're not putting out a signal of who we are. We're just putting out scattered energy. You know, we're, we're not standing for anything. We're just basically adding to the confusion. Um, so, yeah, it's really got to do with honing that energy and, and your self-image, mm. um, you know, because we've got an aura, right, a bioenergy field, sure. and that that walks in front of us and, and behind us and outside of us. So people um, come into contact with that before they come into contact with, with you, if you know what I mean. And so so when we walk along, if we're walking along like, oh, these bloody mask wearers, oh, what are they doing? They're bloody trying to kill Um, Yeah, you're going to get people like grimacing at you and probably yelling at you. But if you're just like, 
oh, well, look, they've all made their own decision and they're, they're welcome to that just like I'm welcome to my decision. I don't want them coming up and shoving masks on and they don't, probably don't want me going ripping theirs off and that's fine. Mm. And, and, you know, if, if, if you're not, if you're not um, married to the outcome, it's much easier. You know, so many people want everything that it's like, this has to be the outcome on this date at this time when this person must be there wearing this color shoes and rah, rah, rah. Um, but, but the, we don't get that choice. We get to, to ask, and this is what I was going to make the point of before is, you know, it says in the Bible, um, give and you shall receive, give and you will receive, right? So what it's telling you is that's a given. The receiving is done. That's a given. You don't have to worry about it. It's done, right? So all we need to worry about is giving. Okay, we don't need to worry about. What, and, and so this whole thing of, you know, trade and exchange of, oh, well, I'll do this for this person. And people think, you know, I'm doing it out of the goodness of my heart. But really in the background, it's like, oh, I think I can, you know, make connections or get some money and all this. Uh, as soon as you do that, you, you've, you've, you've taken yourself out of possibility. And believe me, whatever you get from the physical world is going to be nothing compared to what the energetic or the spiritual world can, can manifest for you. You know, so, um, yeah, just oh, this whole thing of defining too much. I think we just need to focus on giving, you know, have a picture of who we want to be and where we want to go and just, just give with, without the expectation of receiving it. Cause you're going to receive it anyway. But another thing is people think you, you're going to receive it from the person you gave to. That's not true because you're not giving to that person. You're giving to the, to the universe, to the ether, and it can come back from anywhere. Anyway. And as soon as you start defining that, you, you've blocked yourself off. Yep. You know, you, you could, you know, see a homeless person and give them $10 and a week later, you know, someone could pop out of the ether and with a business thing that you've been looking for, you know, for the last six months. That's how it happens. And they don't seem related, but they definitely are. So, yeah, it, it just just focus on giving. Just focus on being a good person. Don't Don't focus so much on what you can get from the world. You know, what can you give to it? How can you make it better? Um, because I guarantee you, and Lorenzo touched on this before and we were talking about it, is when you do that and you just trust and you just start going out and giving and doing the right thing, it just starts flooding back at you. The stuff that will, will come back at you will just, you just won't believe what happens. Um, yes, and, and that's all to do with, with trusting who we are, that we're part of the creation, right? Well, that's who we are. We're not, we're not you know, slaves to be ruled by man. We're... we're you know, the creation, where the, the infinite creation and nothing trumps that. I can tell you that much. And, and I can hear those, those people in the background again with this, because I've given and gotten nothing for years or so I thought really the universe knows whether you're being a hundred percent authentic or not in what you're doing, yep. right? If you're giving, you know, and you're feeling oh, like, you know, I've heard so many mothers, Oh, I gave my kids and I gave in and Oh, poor me, you know, nothing's come back. And well, you know, it's cause it, it wasn't, you know, uh, you know, uh, lo loving giving, let's say, or was, it wasn't uh, in some ways giving without a strings, without attachments, because it was given to get, right? Whether it's from them or someone else, you know, and yeah. we've all done that. Right? And so, when, you know, when I go back to facing the, oh, yeah, yeah. Right? you know, you get to see, you, I think you got to be clear a hundred percent, you know, this is again about speaking your truth, you know, and, and, and if you find yourself, yeah. let's say, giving and not getting whatever, let's say you are being a nice person and your life is giving you shit sandwiches, as their editor likes to say, sometimes when things are coming back that aren't so nice, you know, you get another one of those. Uh, maybe, you know, that's what you've been asking for, for whatever reason, because it's helping you understand that your way of giving or what you're giving or how you're giving maybe has some, uh, some stinky things, you know, in the middle of two nice pieces of bread. Let's mm. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's, as soon as you define like a date and then that's what you're doing, right? Mm. I've given out and, and it hasn't come yet. It hasn't come by this date. You know, so I'm going to judge it now. Look, it, it may be the next day that, that it's about to turn up. But as soon as you, as soon as you change your energy, it's not here. Mm. You, you've then lost your trust, right? That it's, that it's going to happen. And guess what? Now it's not going to happen but, and you're going to prove yourself correct. Okay. You're going to go, yes, I was correct. Awesome. And then um, you're going to start spiraling down, right? Because you're going to prove that, that things don't work for you. But, but that's the exact same energy and the exact same process as when things do work for you. It's, 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 it's just the opposite energy. 
you, you believe it's not going to happen. It doesn't happen. Great. You proved yourself right. You believe it will happen. It happens. Great. You proved yourself right. <laughs> and this is the thing. And, and this is the, you know, the mind's a great trickster, right? So this is, if you don't know who you are, the mind will keep tricking you, keep tricking you, you know, and people are out there, I can manifest, I'm, I'm wealthy now and all these things that they hear, oh, yes, now, now. But if they don't believe it, it's not going to happen and they will self-sabotage. And we see this all the time, you know, people who are like, I never have enough money. And some of these people earn hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. I never, I never have enough money. And then you look at what they do and they just go and drop 10 grand on something stupid and ridiculous here or, you know, if they're not earning that much money, you know, they'll buy things that they don't need that sit there and devalue and then they become rubbish. And, and, and this is their mind proving themselves right. It just makes you do silly little things. Now, if you know who you are and you're like, oh, hang on, I'm a wealthy person and my, my brain's trying to make me buy stupid crap that's going to make me poor, then you, then you can change it. And that's not who I am. And you change that behavior. And this is how we grow. You've, you know, we've got to um, understand who we are, you know, warts and all. It's like Lorenzo said, we've all done stupid things and bad things and things were, that we're not, you know, um, happy with um, about ourselves in the past. All of us, you know, all of us. But how's that going to help you if you just sit there going, I'm a terrible person? Much better to learn from it um, and, and start living and, and showing people how you can be different. Um, Because there's other people in that situation who want to get out. And if you get out and then live live as that, then you inspire other people and show them how they can get out. And that way we, you know, we lift everyone up rather than this, you know, dragging everyone down or putting, you know, a ceiling on and telling them they have to stay under that and all this kind of stuff. And so really, I mean, yeah, knowing who you, speaking your truth and knowing who you are to me is just, I think the biggest bit is, is creativity and, and belief in, in you can do whatever you want. There are no limits. You know, the only limits are the ones we put on ourselves. And that's when we don't understand who we are because when we understand that we are the everything, you know, we are, you know, omnipotent, we are creation, then, you know, nothing can stand in your way, right? right. We, we, I'm finding for myself, you know, life is the best gift ever. And people that don't like their life, you know, I, I, you know and I've been there, you're missing what is something that can't be bought for money. You only get once. It's the best present anyone could possibly get. You know, the fact that you're conscious and aware and you're here and you're alive and you get to have experiences of fruit or a lover or a family member or a dog or, you know, fill in your own blanks here about what gives you a beautiful experience. And taking that for granted is, is insanity, right? And we all do, right? I know I have, you know, everyone's been there. And for me, I'm seeing, you know, this is how I get to speak my truth is in my actions, in my life. I like plants. I work with them. I've noticed, I guess, another way, you know, Campbell and I are talking about, let's say, use another analogy of how you can grow in your truth and notice it more as if I'll take a plant I'm growing and I'll put them in a bigger pot. Let's say I'm growing some citrus trees. Almost overnight, they'll get twice as big. I don't know how that's possible, but it just seems to happen. And, you know, I'll take them from a small pot to a big pot and, you know, I'll wake up the next day and I'll go, oh, my goodness, the tree looks twice as big. But, uh, so I think if you give yourself the reason I'm saying is this is more, you know, you take yourself out of a job or out of a relationship or out of a whatever, whatever you feel constricted with. Maybe naturally, again, if there's people out there saying, I don't know what my truth is, or I keep speaking my truth and I keep feeling constricted, you know, maybe what you've got to do or what you can do. And what I've done is if you take yourself out of those limiting situations, whatever they are, give your roots a chance, like I see Campbell's tree behind them, the tree of life there, you know, give your roots a chance to expand Maybe your leaves will just grow. They'll pick up more sun. And again, I'm speaking, you know, poetically, but your truth may just shine in and you'll have another idea of what to do next as a way to get to your truth if you're not there yet, you know, by giving yourself a bigger life to grow in, let's say. Kind of an answer maybe. Yeah, to yeah, speak. definitely. And up um, people yeah. listen. Get around different people, do different things, get different right. input coming in, you know. Uh, and we know this, right? If you spend your whole life in your house and all you do is go from your home to work and then back again, you're not going to come into contact with much. But if you put yourself out there and do different things, you'll get different ideas. Right. You know, and, and, and this is the ideas are the, you know, that's the power, right? That's when you start to think and your creativity wakes up and you're like, oh my God, I can actually do stuff. Look at this person. They don't have a job. They just walk around climbing mountains. Um, I watched a video last night and this guy, he was um, a software engineer and he just decided um, no, I don't want to do this anymore. 
Uh, so he made a plan and a four-year plan and then quit his job and bought a boat. And he's, he's been sailing around the world for 10 years. Um, doesn't work. Um, you know, uh, he ended up, you know, he's found a, a woman, a wife now, and they got a child. And they just, they, went, they just live on this boat. Now, you know, if you would never know that was even possible. You wouldn't have that thought. You know, most people, he obviously did. And unless you, you start to look for, you know, more information and put yourself out there and what's possible. And when you find what other people, you know, have done, that becomes a possibility, you know, it makes it real for us, right? For, for most people, it's like, well, they've done it, so I can do it too. You know, there's the proof. Um, so definitely broadening your horizons will help you understand who you are. Um, it'll help wake up those, those bits, you know, that are sleeping uh, of, you know, of who you are, of your, your self-image. And um, so, yeah, definitely get out there too. And this is, of course, what they don't want us to do at the moment. We can see they only want us to have one version of events. Um, and that's that obviously is turning people into who, who they are. That's making them do things that, that they wouldn't normally do. You know, let's put it that way. So it's clear that that's what's happening. And yeah, more information is always the way forward. Definitely um, expand your horizons. Allow for magic, I'm going to say. Allow for magic. You know, it's been a rainy day here since I woke up in the morning. I don't know if anyone can notice how bright my face has become. And as I talked about plants and more sunshine coming and things growing, there's a huge amount of sun right now coming through my window. I've been <laughs> here all day. Like yeah, I woke up raining. Through. So suddenly the world is opened up. I'm talking about a plant and it's literally sun, shining sun on me, as you can see. That wasn't there before because I talked about the world shining sun on a planet. I was giving a poetic analogy. And the reason I'm mentioning this is not to say how great I am. It's, it's to point out the fact that if you allow for more through the ability of the ether, and Campbell talked about us having three bodies, we probably at least have three bodies. There's an energetic part to all of us that if you allow it to grow and you allow it to expand, uh, it's like getting in a, on a higher mountain. You'll see further ahead. And if you see further ahead, you'll see more options, right? If you're lost. In the forest, they say, go to high ground. Maybe you'll find your way out of there. Kind of like that, right? If you go to high ground by becoming a better person, by letting go of the evil, by, you know, new friends, as Campbell said, new people, new acquaintances, new job, whatever, you will expand your own horizons and then new things. It's okay not to know now what even you can say my truth is here and I want it to be bigger, but I don't know. That can be your truth today, right? Your truth can be, I want a bigger truth. Your truth could be, I'm not sure. I'm sick. I want to get better. I don't know how. Your truth can be any of these things. I like. I mean, your truth. The truth is as unlimited as as the cosmos. Let's say, and but if you 100% know that truth, even if your truth is I don't know my truth, and you know that 100%, but you want it to open up more, and that's 100% for you, it will happen. So what I'm saying in all of this is, I, I, in my opinion, nobody has any excuse for not getting up, no matter how shitty or unhealthy or unenergetic or poor or whatever that they are. And, 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 and at least admitting to what's going on and then making a choice that they wanted to grow. And then with their eyes open, I found the world always gives you options, even if you don't like them. At yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. You know, we can always change, we can always do more, um, but we've got to be willing to do that as well. Obviously, for things to change, things need to change, right? Um, <laughs> so it is. Yeah. The choice. <laughs> yeah. And when I first like got that, that's so simple, that saying, but when I first actually got it, I was like, yeah, right. Okay. You know, because shelf help, right? Everyone, you know, there's so many people who love to read the books and, you know, I've done it myself. No doubt you have. And you, you watch all the videos and go to seminars and webinars and do all this stuff, but, but you don't actually put it into action. And so what, what this all is, you know, whatever you want to call it, waking up is it's really us learning to trust ourselves more mm. because as we talked about before, unless you're fully a hundred percent in, into what you're doing, you're not going to get the hundred percent full results. Mm. You know, if you're like, well, well, yeah, I, I want to go and live off grid, but, but, you know, I just want to keep my big toe in the system, you know, and work part-time just in case um, you're not trusting, right? You're in fear, you're in fear. So it can't work. Um, so that's the biggest thing. It's just, yeah, just trust yourself that things can get better and take that chance. Believe that the universe has got your back. If your job sucks and, and it's bad for your health and, and your mental health, quit. Just quit. Just just take a chance. I mean, maybe not quit today. Maybe, you know, look around, get a plan, but get a plan to get out of there, mm. you know, and start moving forward. Because sitting in there saying, well, you know, I've got a house mortgage and I've got a car payment. I've got four credit cards, so I can't quit my job. 
No, that's that's all that's going to do is keep you where you are until you hit a point that you can't take it anymore. Yeah, you're um, you're so too- just make plans. Yeah. Mm. yeah, you know exactly. Just mm. do it. You know, see what happens. Just, just start, and it doesn't have to be massive. You know, the the biggest journey starts with the first step. You don't have to say, "Well, right, I'm going to be." a buff millionaire with three Ferraris in two months, you know, it's just like, well, okay. In, in, in a month, I want to be able to walk a kilometer, you know, you know, if you're looking at fitness, just little things. Right. And when you do that, this this is all about the proving yourself, right. You'll go, Oh, I can do that. And when you do that, then you you know, you can do more. Okay. Now I want to work two kilometers, five kilometers. Now I want to work out of the gym for half an hour, just little things, you know, if it's a business, you know, I want to earn 50 bucks a week. Oh, I can do it. Now I want to earn a hundred, you know, just don't put too much pressure on yourself. Cause when you do that, it's easy to fail. You know, if you give these massive goals to yourself, that they can be hard to reach. And if you don't reach them, you're just going to go, yep. See, I can't do it. I'm a failure. Prove myself right. And that's, that's a great trickster in your brain. You know, that, that's, that's tricking you. <laughs> Maybe maybe we'll change the topic uh, when when we publish it to unveiling your truth. <laughs> we stayed on topic. <laughs> well, no, no, it's all it's all about your truth. You know, we talked about speaking it, mm. but you know, we went underneath to how to get to that truth, right? And and what is your truth, and, mm. and what your truth yeah. can do for you. So maybe we've gone bigger, which is great. There's not, nothing wrong with we've started speaking your truth mm. and grown to unveiling your truth. And you know, that's what I want to show metaphysically speaking, or or, or meta 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 fictionally speaking, as I say, is, you know, when Campbell and I start these conversations, we almost never know where they're going to go. We almost never know what's going to come out. Uh, we just both have a feeling it's time to do them and we get together and we start sharing and, and uh, our truth gets unveiled to us through the process. And, uh, you know, they help me quite a bit. And from the comments I see, they help other people too, which is, which is great, you know, which is great. I'm, and, uh, you know, I'm having a blast to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. we hope you all enjoy it. That's such a good point. And I mentioned it um, in a video the other day is, and I've kind of co- um, covered it today as well, is, you know, when we have the everything is defined, you know, and, and you sit there with your notes and that, you, you're not speaking your, your truth. You're not opening up to, you know, the God energy, the ether, the whatever you want to call it, uh, coming in. And and like Lorenzo just said, he said, when we're talking, you know, we we realize our truth because it, it gets told to us, you know, so we're part of the whole and, and, yeah, that's a big thing is don't define everything. Just 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 trust. Just see what what, what can happen. Because I guarantee you that, that what the universe can think up is much, much, much more and better than what you can think up. I guarantee it every single time. Me too. Much more interesting. You know, mm. I've seen myself being a limited idiot more often than not. And I'll just allow my heart and the universe to talk to me. And mm. you know, you seem like you're smarter than you are because you know you're using everything around you, which you're a part of anyways. You know, I think I think we were born into these bodies to explore not to save money in any of these things to explore the best we can be, you know, our creative juices, our imagination, our creative process. I've heard all kinds of things are possible from all kinds of people. And, you know, I, for one, I'm going to go for it. You know, my truth is to, to go for full, for freedom, see where it takes me, allow the, allow the rest to grow, you know, and, and be with those I love and those are who I love me, whether they're new people or, or coming together and you'll make new friends. Kamala and I are becoming good friends. You know, we've only met each other virtually you know, I don't know, maybe nine months ago or something like that, eight months ago, something of that nature. Yeah, yeah it hasn't even it's been that. Long. But, you know, you, you find the best people and the most loving people and people that you know will have your back because you're acting in that way and living from that truth. And, you know, I'm feeling very grateful for how my life has grown through these uh, 18 months of shenanigans. People go, oh, it's so horrible, it's horrible. And, you know, on the other side, it's as great as it's horrible. That's that's what challenge is all about. It has to be so horrible so it can be mm. so great. And that's the balance. And, you know, that's how you can find your truth. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. So just find it, go within. And then um, the next step is just live it, guys. Speak it and 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 understand that's enough. Your truth is, is just as valid as anyone else's. Mm. True enough. All right. Well, maybe we've come to a, a conclusion from this okay. great conversation. Conclusion. This is a conclusion. Your truth is great. Have. You're great. Live it. Fall down if you need to. Be stupid. Be ridiculous. I'm talking about myself. I've been there, you know. And eventually, though, if you if you have the balls, as Campbell and I've talked about, and you're strong enough to realize you can make a mistake and grow from that, then there's more and more and more and more for for all of us. So you know, that's my truth. It can be your truth too. Live your truth. Unveil it. Enjoy it. Speak it. Dance in it. Whatever it takes. 
<laughs> exactly. And get it out to the world, guys. Get it you out to the world. You are awesome. You are yes, awesome. Right all right. It's been a good conversation, Campbell. Thanks again. I love yeah. all of you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Lorenzo. Yeah, I appreciate it. We're going to get to, I'm going to get this out as soon as I can. And uh, Campbell and I will maybe do another live chat on this. I want to say quickly as well, uh, I don't know if I'm putting Campbell on the spot, but I believe September 14th, we're doing another live show, Powerful Parenting. Uh, as as possible, Campbell's invited, so I won't put him too much on the on the on the on the spot. But uh, I'll leave some links below, and if you are already signed up for our past events, you can come to this one. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you there. And if not, we'll record it and get it out anyway. So one way or the other, you'll get a chance to enjoy it. You'll see it. Yes, exactly. All right, guys. Yep, and of course, as always, support those people that are you know doing the work that's helping us all, guys. Um, you know, people like Lorenzo doing the work out there. Um, like I said, you got to, if we don't support that, uh, these people, they'll unfortunately go away. So <laughs> this is all about speaking the truth, you know, supporting other people who, who are, you know, speaking their truth. Yep. And sporting in action. I love it. Thanks, Campbell, again. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you all again. Thank you all. See ya. I say